Hello, it's me, and uh, basically, so you see something on Shapeways that you really want, but you're so tired about how expensive it is, and you're wondering, should you buy it fully assembled, or should your son just grab things from you, or should you, uh, or should you uh, get it in the cheapest material possible, clean it yourself, dye it yourself, sticker it yourself, do everything yourself. So I'm going to do a little experiment. This is a puzzle that I've been wanting for a little while. This is the 3 by 5 by 6 yeah, three by five by six. So I'm going to go through the process of, of getting the cheapest one, which is the, uh, the white, strong and flexible or whatever. And we're going to go through the process of uh, taking it from, from getting it to actually assembling it and stickering it. So this is what you're going to get. You're going to get all these little parts. Now, with some of them, you need a little more than maybe two screws. And in this particular case, with a three by five by six, all you need are two screws, these two screws over here. The rest is self-contained. These are 3M or 3 millimeter screws. One is about uh, 10 millimeters. The other is supposed to be about 15. I got one that's 20. You can get the cube for u versions, which is also an M3, but it's got this little cleft at the top here, which, uh, which you're not going to want. So you can pick these up at pretty much any type of hardware store. So the first step is cleaning, because these have a lot of powder in them. That powder is basically nylon residual that's, uh, that's, that's there, and you don't want it to be there because it's going to make the dyeing process more irregular and uneven. So the first step is cleaning it. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a, a pot of water, take it to almost boiling point, put soap in it, and then put all this in there uh, to near boiling and just let it uh, sit there stirring it occasionally for five minutes. Uh, that way it'll be nice and clean and all the white powder stuff is going to be off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So to a pot of near boiling water, I'm going to add some soap. I'm just using a detergent here, dishwasher detergent. Pop that up there. And um, basically this is going to clean the... Uh, Clean the, that's enough? Okay. This is going to clean the parts because uh, it, it's pretty powdery. So from there, I'm going to kind of mix it around, mix the soap around a little bit. And again, it said that you want it near boiling, but not completely boiling. So I'm just going to simmer it right now. Okay, so okay, so I just stirred in the uh, water there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pieces here all of my shape waste pieces and I'm just going to pour them in. And when I pour them in, I'm going to stir them every, uh, stir them for about five minutes. I'm just going to pour them in there. Stir them, wash into the wind. Again, not completely boiling, but more near boiling and that should, that should wash it pretty well. So I'm just going to get this down here. And okay, and after about five minutes, then we're going to go ahead and uh, strain it and try to get all the soap off. Who wants Rubik's Cube stew? Okay, now that we have it in here, we're gonna go ahead and very carefully strain it in here without losing any pieces. Now, pretty impressed how none of them melt or anything like that. I guess it's because they're made of nylon. Uh, don't burn yourself. No, I do not have three hands. I'm using my lovely assistant. Any excuse to get me in the kitchen, right? Right. Right. Okay. Pour this into here. Be very careful not to lose any par any parts. Hey, get in there. Where do you think you're going? Um, I may need to have used a slightly bigger strainer. Oh, there's more. Okay. Um, well, here. Okay, what you want to do next is you want to rinse it off thoroughly, getting all the soap off. Doing. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off here. And this is water with water, and hopefully what this will do is get the rest of the soap off and get the rest of the white powder off. The reason that you're doing this is because it's the dye is not going to set too well. It's going to set unevenly if um, if you have any soap on it or if you have any powder on it. So just running cold water. So yeah, it's pretty resilient. Still pretty detailed in terms of its uh, structure. But just rinse it off completely, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, now that the pieces are pretty well washed, now, the worry that I had at first was, with all that hot water, am I going to warp the material? But this is pretty durable. You're not going to have much problems with warping the, the nylon material with this. But what you want to do for the dye, um, there's a couple different brands you can use. I'm going to use the RIT brand over here, black, of course. 
this stains everything. So get some nylon gloves. Um, and then a strainer, because after you're done doing it, you want to make sure that you can save the rest for future puzzles in some bottles. So some bottles here, as well as various pots that you're going to be putting the dye in and also staining it. Here's a small pot if you have small pieces, and a big pot if you have big pieces. So, we'll have a go at this. Basically, to mix this, you're going to need some white vinegar um, with that. We're going to put this to a boil, so uh, let's see how it works. Okay, so with rubber gloves on and nice old clothes, um, you can actually mix a cup with this with a full a cup of uh, the vinegar with an entire bottle of this. Just gonna keep pouring here. Okay, now we have the uh, Basically, I put the whole bottle in there just because I can save whatever I don't use. But I'm going to go ahead and pour in the vinegar. This is one cup of vinegar. Pouring that in there. I'm just going to stir it in and bring it to a near boiling temperature here. So that's what I'm going to do. As soon as it's near boiling, then I will put the pieces in. So I'll take it from there. Okay, I think we're just about at the boiling point. You can see that there's a little bit of a bubbles, a little bit of activity that's there. Don't want it to be completely boiling. So now I'm going to go ahead and take all of my pieces here and just start moving them in there. I did add some more water and I'm probably going to keep adding water until I'm sure that all of them are going to be kind of immersed. So let's take the plunge, put it in there, maybe turn turn it down a little bit there to a simmer. I'm just going to put the rest in. So it's all in there, but we have to make sure that there's nothing uneven about it. So I'm just going to mix it in here, a spoon, a ladle, whatever you want. And you're going to be keeping it in there for about 20 minutes, stirring it around, keeping it hot. So I'm just going to put that in there and stir it around for 20 minutes. Adding water is needed in order to get the, uh, get the desired effect. Um, keeping it warm should... Um, allow it to soak into the soak into the nylon. So more with that later. Here's a little update. Something I noticed is that it almost has like a purple look to it. But uh, when I took one out I kind of confirmed it on here that yeah it's looking pretty jet black so I think it'll come out better when it's washing. Got another about 10 minutes of a slow simmer so we'll pick it up later. Okay now that I've got it here we're gonna pour it into this strainer. Uh, what you could try to do is try to recover as much as uh, of the dye as you can because you can um, you can reuse it. But we're going to go ahead and put it in the strainer and then wash it thoroughly. Okay, so now the next part after I've put it in here is to rinse it out thoroughly. So, so what you want to do is just clean it off until you can see it's still steaming a little bit over there. But clean it off and uh, rinse it with water until you pretty much get all residual amounts off. Okay, so at the end of the process, this is what they look like. You can see that they're nice and black. Now, the first time I did this, after washing it, it didn't come out black, it came out blue. A really nice blue, but not black. So I actually restained it, and I think the problem was is that I washed it too quick. So what I'm doing is I'm not washing it yet. The way that I did it, I'm just gonna let it air dry so that it can stay black, and I think I needed to put more time to let the um, vinegar and also the heat kind of let it set in there. So the first time I did it, I only got enough black to make it blue, but now it looks nice and black. Plus, I was able to capture some of the dye as I was pouring it out with the uh, with a filter. So this I can use for future projects, but otherwise I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to wash it, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so here we are with all of our pieces. Um, we've got all of our pieces dyed. Now, basically, the dye that I used was a black dye. But um, it actually almost has a, well, like a navy blue dark color to it, which is okay. And uh, I think that there's kind of a learning curve that has to happen with this as well. Uh, what I would suggest when dyeing it is to, is to not do all of them at once like I did. Uh, I kind of threw them all in the pot at once. Some of them you can tell, uh, you know, look, look fairly black, but they're those that just look frankly navy blue. But you have to make the decision if... Um, if that's okay with you. The first time I did it, I actually dyed it twice. The first time it looked pretty bright blue. 
By the second time it was black, but then when I washed it, it kind of came out this color. So again, it'll it's okay for my purposes, but uh, you just be sure instead of doing it all at once, just do it uh, a little bit at a time, uh, maybe a couple pieces at a time. It doesn't take uh, too very long. All right, now in terms of uh, the step before assembly, which is potentially lubrication, there's two ways to do it. I've heard from Ola Jansen, there's the lazy way and the crazy way. The lazy way is where you basically just have it assembled and then just squirt a little bit of the silicon uh, spray in between the areas that aren't uh, moving so good. The crazy way is to literally take all of your pieces and then put a little lubrication on all of that. Um, I like to assemble it first and see how well it moves and then just kind of put a little bit more in as I need it. That way I can kind of titrate the level of lubrication um, based on needs. Sometimes it comes together really nicely. So, on to assembly.